I am responsible for like making sure all the episodes are bleeped. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in just everyday conversation, if someone's like, F I'm like, bleep, that's not bleeped. Oh, this, you're a person. You are not an episode. Right. <laughs> My name is Natalie Neurauter. I'm the post executive producer of Vanderpump Rules. I've been on the show since season one when I started as a story editor. So, a couple pointers. Okay. Just don't look at the camera, direct everything to me. Okay. And if you're ever talking about someone specifically, use their name. It's better to just have the full picture and story. Yeah, and if you're sh talking someone, say it with your chest. Chest up, bitch. <laughs> Got it, love it. <laughs> Obviously, I know you, we've worked together forever now, but what does a story editor or producer do on a reality show? Essentially, a story editor looks at the footage for the first time and starts to see what is happening in each scene, what's interesting, what's funny, what's heartfelt. Let's say there's a party, and the party takes place across two hours. When it goes on television, it might be eight minutes of footage. And so, so many sets of eyeballs have to be on that beforehand to cut it down in a way that keeps the story intact, keeps people's points of view intact, keeps the fun stuff in, and then drives towards something big and interesting to end an episode. How many hours of footage would you say you've watched on Vanderpump Rules and just in your career in general? I mean, thousands. Wow. We usually film with three crews, five days a week, usually two cameras at a time. And every episode by the time it goes on television has to be 42 minutes and 30 seconds. And that's just like of the content that airs. And how do you decide and how many people decide what stays in and what gets cut? We usually put almost all the scenes that happen in a timeline on the board, trying to find something really great for the ending and working backward from there. So we kind of start with everything at first. And then we have like extensive field notes. I try to like look for some of the bigger things to eyeball first to see, are they as fun or interesting as it sounds when you read it? And then it comes down to watching things. And when Bravo gets their eyes on things, they might have different ideas. Maybe they want something bigger, bolder for the beginning of the episode. Sometimes they want to start in a like more melancholy place and get into someone else's headspace. Have there been any storylines that you wished you had explored more over the last 11 seasons? I know that the entire world was fascinated by the fact that Ariana and Kristen Doty became friends. Mm -hmm. That kind of snuck up on us. It just felt like suddenly it had happened. That's a hard hurdle to get over in a friendship, sharing an ex, especially one that is hurt one of you so badly at the time. Now it's way more understandable. Yeah. But at the time it felt radical, like yeah. radical friendship. Speaking of scandal, did you have any inkling that there was anything brewing? Because obviously there were little moments, but were those noticed in the moment or it was only after? As we were putting together the season, what we started to see very clearly was Tom wanting to be out in the world way more often than Ariana did. And the people he was going out in the world with were Schwartz and Rachel. I thought that she might have a crush on him mm -hmm. because I think she felt that he was, you know, the number one guy in the group. <laughs> he had that energy. That to me was sort of relatable, but it didn't feel sinister. It felt innocent, clearly incorrect. Yeah. I feel like you have grown up a lot in this career of Vanderpump Rules. What lessons would you say that you have learned after so long of working on this show? I think learning how to tell a story, and what that means is truly getting to understand everyone's points of view, uh, looking for humor even in moments where it doesn't seem like there is humor to be had. Last season, Katie and Schwartz were having their like non-anniversary dinner and that waiter, bless his heart, kept interrupting with like more <laughs> food and drinks and they would just like stop for a second and be like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, and then just dive right back in. It's not true It's 100% true. What a true. cynical. It's not cynical. onion soup. Careful because it's very hot. Okay, okay, okay. thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. With my wildest fever dreams of Jaeger. Oh, hey, what's up, Vladimir? Let me introduce you. Oh my God, no, it's okay. Sor Fan Torres. Oh my God, it's so good. Thank you so much. It's perfect. Anyways. You know, we could have cut around all those intrusions, but that's what sold the reality of the moment, you mm -hmm. know? And then you get a wonderful editor. Paul Peltekian did that one. 
and just the music, the stops and starts to yeah. highlight that. I love that. And sometimes you need that comedic relief in serious moments too. And it's real. Yes. Reality. Yes. You know? Well, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. It's always fun when we get a flip the script and I put you it. guys in the hot seat. I love that. I was like, honestly, like, do you always feel like you're being interrogated here? Yes. Or does it? <laughs> then got all the lights on you and I'm like. I have to say though, I'm like very grateful you haven't watched like thousands of hours of my life <laughs> to ask me <laughs> questions about it because that would be intimidating. You guys do it well, very gracefully. <laughs> <laughs>